Hi guys, welcome back to Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. This may or may not be a short episode. We're gonna- oh. We're gonna see if it is. I don't, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh! Oh, I just walked Ooh. right over the oh, oh. Okay, we could do this. We can do this. Oh, oh. Oh no. Same, same, Sherlock. I same. Oh, I like how even as an even in his imagination, he he gets a little bit of a sweat going on. <laughs> okay, let's go this way first. Oh, oh, hold on before we go that way. Dead end. Okay, fine. We've been in this temple for a long time. I can only imagine that this has to be extremely important to the deduction. Because if it isn't, that would be hilarious that they added all this just for funsies. Because I could have solved it, but it would be probably wrong because it has nothing to do with any of this. Another puzzle. I... What's going on? What's happening? What's the noise? <gasps> oh my god, are the rocks falling from- Oh. There are. Okay. How do I... Is it just like smiling faces that I have to be in front of? Smile. Smile, frown. Smile. Smile, smile. Smile. Frown. Smile. Oh, the other side was frown. Oops. Okay. Smile, smile, smile. Smile. Smile, smile. Smile. Smile, smile. Smile, smile. Brown, smile, 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 brown, shit. So close. Okay. Smile, 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 smile. Looking for the smiling ones. Cause they're the ones that won't hurt me. And you just gotta go right this way. And that's a smile. That's angry. Happy. Happy. And we're out of here. Good. Oh, same. Man, these are some good puzzles, but that they're definitely kind of making my heart race just a little bit. Just a little bit here. Alright, we're getting closer to the end. I know it. Yes. Sherlock has one hell of an imagination, though. One hell of an imagination. Is this what it's like to be Sherlock? Running around inside a Mayan temple? Doing crazy things? Imagining yourself dying? 
because I'm playing. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful, though. These are the kind of settings that I adore. Um. Okay. The ha the, oh, this has to come to an end. Okay. Shit. It forced this perspective. This won't be good. Okay, that's fine. That was okay. There's the gold. The treasure of Takunuman. Yeah, um... The calendar. It was here. So Zacharias, Sir Charles, and Marley have all known about this from the beginning. Yeah, I'm afraid to touch that treasure, just saying. No keyhole or handle. There must be a way. Um, I don't want to touch you. This is the statuette that Bernard Marley, Sir Charles, and Zacharias all shared. Do I have to press it in the order? What order, though? This is the statuette that Bernard Marley. What order? been how he lost his arm. <laughs> okay, what order do we do this in? I don't see any symbols anywhere unless we're supposed to use the ones that are on the calendar, but I really don't want to pull out... Are these the ones on the... No, there's n these are not the ones on the calendar. I recognize them. Hmm... Oh. Duh. Oh. Okay. One. Two. Three. It doesn't even have anything to do with the symbols, it's just the dots. Um, four. I'm sure a line must be five. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. That's a really good way to um, 
make someone really hate you and want to kill you. And that would explain why he has the Mayan calendar. Those dickheads! We got an achievement for that. Those dickheads! That's awful. That's very awful. Yeah, that's... Ooh, that's an awful thing to do. Look at this. This is absolutely insanity. Albert was left- Albert was left behind, and his life was ruined. Albeit blames the expedition members for his fate, he seeks revenge and might adopt the curse to this end. Albeit believes that he was punished by the curse, he does not seek revenge. No, he... I... yeah. Albeit was guilty, albeit used is an adult of small stature as the killer. He wishes people to believe that the curse killed Zachariah Greystoke and at a later date, the other members of the expedition. Albeit killed for revenge with an accomplice of short stature, they should both go to prison. Albeit will die soon, he is no longer able to kill anyone else. His short accomplice was used as a live weapon. They should be allowed to remain free. I'm gonna condemn him. Oh, should I? <laughs> they were such dicks to him. They essentially killed him. Um... I just hope it's not his son. If his son, oh, if it's his son, I won't like that. I hope I chose correctly, I'm pretty sure I did. That whole temple thing kind of solidified my idea. Mr. Albeard. Oh, you're here with your son. Yes, obviously. It's not your we son. We have to talk with you, and it involves the police. I see. Gulliver, go across the road to Mrs. James. This is an adult conversation. Hold on just one second, please. Uh, a pygmy? As I suspected. Albeit brought him back from Brazil. The fuck you were both slaves there and you escaped together, am I correct? You are. We are companions through life to death. He's more like a brother to me. It's clear enough now. You and your accomplice are guilty to the murder of Zacharias Greystoke. They had to pay for what they did. If only I'd had the time to get all of them. But Gulliver only did what I told him. It's for the judge to decide that. But given the nature of judges, I doubt that he will be lenient towards a pygmy who kills an Englishman. Um, does it tell me if I got that right? Sounds like I got it right. 55%, so it's literally half the people agree. See, I, now I feel bad because that, that man will, will probably be harsh you know, harsh consequences, but, uh, oh god. <laughs> but, I mean, they're still murderers, they're still... That is a case of murder, that's a case of straight-up diabolical murder. Yeah.
you got an achievement for that, but so far we've condemned both, but like, <sighs> I don't know about that one. I really liked that case, but I feel bad just a little bit because he was a victim himself, but you know, sometimes not all victims are innocent forever. In that case, he went from victim to aggressor. Father, Mr. Orson Wilde is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, he, you know, the star of American theater. And he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. Oh, she is blackmailing me now. It's just, I'd like to have been informed. You'll have to get used to it, Mr. Holmes. Miss Caitlin is growing up. Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. I'm about to slap I can't my child believe silly. It. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will. Brains. <laughs> that fucking accent. <laughs> I know it's my accent, but ooh. Right? That's like a really, really thick American accent. Oh, okay, hold on. Scarf falls. Fashion trends. American pride. That's just something us Americans do. We, we just do that. We just have American flags everywhere. I have an American flag belt. American flag, um, um, uh, bathing suit. I have an American flag, um, self-affected? I don't know. Uh, maybe that is actor's tool? Um, I don't know. Americans just like the American flag. That's just all we do. Orson Wilde, not yet 30 years of age, a star of American theater who came to London to study the role of Sherlock Holmes. It is probable that he began his study previously. He smokes the same brand of tobacco as Holmes. Orson is narcissistic and follows fashion. He admires his own reflection. The brooch pinned to his breast displays his American pride. We all have that pride. Mr. Wilde, your room. Charming. <laughs> this is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> love it. I love it. Oh, Toby. Ooh, he... Oh, come on, Toby. Your soap bath couldn't have been as bad as that. Oh, poor Toby. Oh, we have post. Mr. Holmes, my name is Tabitha Folk. I am one of the nurses who tends, attends the, who attends the inmates of Westgate Prison. I took care of Mr. Albert, who asked me to write you after his death. He, he remained furious right up to the end and refused to ask God for forgiveness. He blamed you, Mr. Holmes, for breaking his will. It was sad to see. With respect, Tabitha Folk. Well, Tabitha, he's a straight-up fucking murderer, so... Wow, he moved in fast. Okay. Honestly, the level of narcissism. <laughs> While Trudy has a perfect disguise kit, do actors really need all this? Yeah, absolutely they do. I'm kind of rude right now, aren't I? Okay, what am I... What am I supposed to be doing here? Oh, there we go. I use the same brushes for makeup. <laughs> Holmes is making fun of him, but he himself uses it. 
This must be grease paint. Why does he need blue and red? <laughs> oh, face powder of an excellent quality. I forgot my hat. Father? I'm just checking, um... You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it uh, might be. Uh, Practicing my disguises, you know me. <sighs> no, d don't touch that! No, no. Well, he is just like me. Two birds of a ah, feather. Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. <laughs> Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared, and my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes, although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. It happens. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitters' Ball. Mr. <laughs> Windybank did not wish for my mother to attend. <laughs> He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together, but then Father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Fuck him. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, Father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until Father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Were you engaged? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Oh. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. <laughs> He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha, a love letter. Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes, tell her. <laughs> Do you wear glasses? Didn't. Often wears spectacles, yeah. She's flashy, she is rich. Engagement ring. What the hell? Different boots? Didn't notice. Why didn't you notice that you have two different shoes on? That's really hard to miss. She's really missing her glasses. How'd she even make it here? Mary Sutherland is a good-tempered young lady of 25 years of age. She has poor eyesight. She has failed to notice that she's wearing mismatched boots. Mary is a wealthy young lady. She's engaged to be married. Let me see that letter. A love letter? Aren't you dying to read it, Holmes? A love letter? Oh, I guess that is how I sound. <laughs> 
public notice, a disappearance. Gentleman by the name of Mr. Hosmer Angel has mysteriously vanished. Mr. Angel is of around five feet, seven inches in height. That's tall. Right? That's tall. Of strong build and sallow complexion. He is black haired with bushy side whiskers and a mustache. He is likely to be wearing tinted spectacles. On last sighting, Mr. Angel was dressed in black silk frock coat, frock coat, what is that, with a black waistcoat and gray hairs tweed trousers. He is known to have been employed in an office on Leyden Hall Street. If you are in possession of any information, please come forward. There will be a reward for helping, help given for any help given in finding this gentleman. It's typed. My dear love, please don't worry your sweet head. Do you believe that I would say anything to your family who understand nothing of love? We have what a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Such a short time, but it was enough for me to know that you are my life. I want to spend every minute of now on with you. I wish that it were possible. I love you very much, and I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more upon his travels, so we can meet again. Hosmer Angel. This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. I, I thought that was weird, too. Good quality paper, quite smooth. Fairly common ink, nothing special. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? That's weird to say. I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. Let's study this letter more closely. What am I looking for? Ooh. There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. It's probably written by the father. Dear Mary, I'm taking the opportunity of sending you these few lines in hopes that they may find you and your mother in good health. France is a nice country to look at, but it is the same as anywhere. There are rogues here who deceive and mistreat their women. Men nowadays are so dishonorable. They won't think twice to break your heart. I hope that you will be an obedient girl and look after your mother and that you will take my advice. Stay at home. I'll be back before long. Your father. The stepfather's letter is also typewritten. Mm -hmm. I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm -hmm. Take my advice. Stay at home. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. Quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Fairly common ink. Nothing special. Let's study this letter more closely. There's the same one. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. The Anne's. This letter has a defect? Ah, and it's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. Let's one try... One more letter with a defect. K. Where's a K? Where's a K? Mmm... Where are there any K's? Does this letter have any K's? K, 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 Um. Oh, there we go. Another letter match with the same defects. One more letter with a deep Another letter match with the same defects. Yeah. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. The father. Type both. What else can I tell you? I think this case is fairly obvious, don't you, Mr. Holmes? 
fairly obvious. I don't know why I make fun of him. Different boots. Um. Hmm. Didn't see yeah. That just means she wears glasses. The letters have the same typewriter defects and were written by one person on a single typewriter. I do not believe in coincidences. Actually, I do. They're just very rare. Um, Mary's stepfather tries to keep her at home. Ah. Uh, and, um... Mary had the opportunity to socialize without her so stepfather's knowledge. Um, he travels, he's a secretive character. For some reason, Hosmer Angel met with Mary only when her stepfather was away on business trips. Mary's stepfather was unaware of her relationship. Mm. No. It's strange. It's very strange. Mary's stepfather lied. He didn't take his business trip. He had found out that Mary was disobeying him. Yeah, he's a liar. Oh. The family have an interest in Mary remaining single as they have access to her inheritance. Oh god. <laughs> Mary's stepfather, Mr. Windebank, adopted a disguise and played the role of Mr. Hosmer Angel to keep his stepdaughter and her money close to home. Oh, that was not what I was going for. I was just thinking that he may have killed her. Or killed him. I'm gonna tell the truth. Oh my god. That's awful. That's one of the worst things in the world. You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away. To bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Seriously? Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I I, can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But thank you for all you have done, oh my Mr. God. Holmes. Holmes, you could have been more diplomatic. She needed to know. She needed to know. You have to... She needed to know. Ah. <laughs> Honesty is almost, almost, almost the best. Always the best. What is going on? Someone throw a rock? Oh no, it's some sort of... Mr. Holmes, is everything all right? Oh. oh my god. Go back to your flat and stay there with Kate. It's a bomb. It's ticking. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. It's ticking. Yeah, no, um... How about we don't open it? <laughs> I 
It's ticking. Oh, that was an option. I could choose one or the other. Oh. Yeah, no, we're gonna... We're gonna... Salmon? Move away. <laughs> I thought physically move your body away. Physically leave the bomb. It's ticking. Physically leave the bomb. I yeah. see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. Um... A fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret admirer. I have two minutes to defuse it. Why is Sherlock so fucking cute? There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. When the alarm triggers, the bomb will explode. A source of electricity for the detonation. Aha! This solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires and the bomb will explode. A package with explosive material. There are wires going in and out. It's useless to predict how they might be tangled up inside. Oh my god. Okay. Um. In this episode of How Many Times Can We Kill Sherlock Holmes? Alright, um... Yeah. There we Oof. go. Um, pretty much anything that's connected to the... Okay, so this... Okay. Anything that's connected to the, um... Bomb itself we want to really cut here. This? Yeah. That's good. Um, yep, that one. Cut that. Um... That one, yep. Good. Um, not that. Not that. That one, yep, good. Um... That one. Good. Um, maybe this one. Good. And this one? Good. Okay, what else is connected to... No. Connected to the actual... I don't want to cut that one. Maybe this one. Oh. Shit. Um... So that connected power, so I can cut that one now. Good. And that means I can... Well... It should be- it should be safe now. Should be safe. Yeah, should be fine. Should be fine. Let's fast forward. <gasps> what happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? <laughs> the old- Toby. Mr. Holmes, are you alright? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. What do you look like? Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about 5'5", five, five, with black hair and a hair lip. Hair... Hair... Oh, moustache? <laughs> Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch you, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Yeah, you did very good. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. Pe I thought penny was... I thought a penny was just an um, American money term. <laughs> I guess not. Who tried to kill me, Mr. Holmes? You are such a narcissist. That almost looks like a woman's jacket. Wait. What are the- what side are the buttons on on my- on women's things? 
Are they on the same on the pants or are pants hold the same? Um, on the left hand side, on pants, but I think jacks and pants are different. Um, open. It. Oh, JT. JT are the owner's initials. Let's see what's inside. There could be a hidden message that's been written with some lemon juice. Oh my god. No, don't touch anything else. I... Oh my god. Fuck this dude. There are ink stains on this piece of paper. I could read the text with the help of my analysis table if Wild hadn't already destroyed it. Really, Mohawks? Bring out... Oh. Rally, Mohawks, bring out your axes, and tell King George will pay no taxes on his foreign tea. His threats are vain, vain to think, to force our girls and wives to drink, his vile bohe, bohe. Then rally, boys, and hasten on to meet our chiefs at Green Dragon. Dragon. A poem. But what does it mean? This isn't a poem. It's a song called Rally Mohawks. That great moment when America rebelled against England's dominance. <laughs> then rally, boys, and hasten on to meet our chiefs at the Green Dragon. And I bet they hoisted a tankard of ale and invented a new nation. Along with deciding if this was the week they got to dump some tea into Yon Harbor. <laughs> Why ever did he keep such a song in his pocket? That's so American. I've never heard of that song, though. It's completely news to me. <sighs> Thanks to Wild, my analysis table has been completely destroyed. Good job, Toby. Oh. Good job, Toby. Yeah, he barked at it. He, he barked at it. He was a good boy. Who tried to kill me, Mr. Holmes? Oh my god. It's about to be me. I need to finish here first. All right. I have no idea where this song would be. History of That's not the one I need. Oh. The Green Dragon Tavern was a public house used in both the tavern and a meeting place and was located on Union Street in Boston's North End. In the early 19th century, a number of replicas of the Green Dragon were opened across Europe. One of those is now located in London, near the harbor in the district of Whitechapel. Here it is. Sounds like a place we need to go. That's all I can do for now. Let's try and get a few hours of sleep. How can you sleep when there is someone trying to kill me? How selfish. We get American character. And he's the worst. <laughs> Fits. Honestly. No offense. <laughs> no offense. But I do like that. I do like crazy characters. They're fun. I hate this guy though. <laughs> Alright, what are we doing? Probably going in the Green Tavern, right? <laughs> He's so funny. Oh. Oh my, I see you and Kate are best friends already. Cute. Oh my, I see. Did you sleep well, Kate? Very well, thank you, Father. Is that wild? Whatever is he doing now? He's transforming you into a legend. Oh, silly man. Kate, what's the matter? Well, I just came by to tell you that I'm going to the zoo with Alice. We'll be having lunch in town. I've hardly seen you these past few days. Don't you want to stay here for a while, Kate? Did you remember then? <sighs> it's my birthday today! I should have figured because of Toby. Uh... Uh, should I lie? Should I conf- I'm gonna lie because- oh honey, I remembered. I fooled you, didn't I? 
Of course I remembered. Here's some spending money. Go and enjoy your special day. All right. I'll go then. Kate. You never do anything right. All right, all right. Come here. I've had enough of you not caring about me. I do care. I've just had a, a difficult night. Yes, Alice told me about the bomb, but you wouldn't. Why would Kate, I? I? I only want to protect you. You don't understand anything. I wish Alice would adopt me. Why don't would... be ridiculous. I don't know why my parents entrusted me to you. Did they really know you? Kate, come back. Damn it. Such a waste. This... Alice, I have an odd sense about her. It's as if she's playing with Kate's feelings. Yes. This would be a good opportunity to investigate Alice's flat while they're absent. And anyway, it'd be better to visit the Green Dragon Tavern during the evening. Yes. Why the fuck would Alice do something like that? Why? Ugh, that's... She shouldn't do that. She shouldn't tell my adoptive daughter that there was a bomb in your home. Like, no, of course not. You shouldn't do that. It just didn't give her a lot of anxiety. A back room. Force is not an option. I Mrs. Hudson is not at home. Okay, I can't use force. Force is not an option. I should find another way inside Alice's flat. A back room. Um. Oh. That's an easy one. There we go. Huh. Okay, cool. Okay, we need a three. Nope. Three. And, um... Oops. Yeah. And then a one right there. Um... Now I want a four. There's no space for this lock Oops. Um, remove. That's a three, right? I'll leave that there. Switch the lock picks. Four. Put that one there. There we go. It looks as though Alice has not slept here for a long time. That's super weird. Hmm, there's a puzzle. A phonograph cylinder. Cool. Just gonna steal it then. Alright guys, we are at 50 minutes. And I think I'm gonna go to bed. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.